All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, to me, Dwayne Wade has probably been one of, if not the most underrated NBA players of all time. He is a sure first ballot Hall of Famer. He's been incredible for his 15 years in the NBA. And as I've stated in the past, I believe that he's closer to Kobe Bryant than Kobe Bryant was to Michael Jordan. Just my opinion. I'm sure many of the Kobe Bryant super fans are going to get upset and disagree and talk about how Kobe scored 81 points in a game, blah, blah, blah. Look, <laughs> I've never seen another guard perform in the NBA Finals as well as Dwayne Wade did in the 2006 Finals who wasn't named Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant has never had a performance in the NBA Finals anywhere near the performance that Dwayne Wade had in the 2006 Finals. And the reason why I bring this up is because the Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman show had a very interesting segment on Dwayne Wade in which they were trying to hypothesize what his overall legacy was going to be in light of the fact that one of the students who was killed in the mass shooting at the high school in Parkland, Florida, named Joaquin Oliver, was buried with a Dwayne Wade jersey on. Dwayne Wade hit a game-winning shot against the Philadelphia 76ers and had Joaquin Oliver's name scribbled on his sneaker in memory of him. So that's, that is what instigated or inspired this conversation. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. But LeBron's BFF gentleman also put in work yesterday, too. We saw vintage D. Wade as he had the game winner to take down the up-and-coming 76ers last night. So he was certainly playing inspired basketball dedicating the rest of his season to Stoneman Douglas High School student Joaquin Oliver. Oliver was one of the 17 people killed by a gunman in Parkland, Florida. Wade paid tribute to Oliver and his sneakers after finding out that he was buried wearing a Wade jersey. And Miami is truly where Dwayne Wade belongs. He never should have left in the first place. He should not have allowed himself to get sucked down the Kobe Bryant rabbit hole of team adoration. Many of these NBA veterans saw what the Lakers did for Kobe Bryant and thought that they were going to get the same treatment, not understanding that they're not on Kobe's level. Now, once again, I believe that Dwayne Wade is closer to Kobe than Kobe is to Jordan. But they also must understand that Kobe Bryant was a prime mover on the Los Angeles Lakers franchise. That is NBA royalty. That franchise is considered NBA royalty and Kobe is considered Laker royalty. And even after all that... They would have let Kobe go if it was not for Jeannie Buss. The only reason, in my view, why they gave him that contract was because Jeannie Buss put the kibosh on allowing them to get rid of Kobe and to try to bring in new free agents because many free agents did not want to sign with the Lakers because they didn't want to play with Kobe. But look, that's a whole other topic. Just getting back to D. Wade, I think that when they do a, you know, when they do a review of Dwayne Wade's career, a synopsis of all the things that he's accomplished is going to put in greater perspective how effective and great a player he was. Is he Kobe? No. But to me, is, is he one of the top five shooting guards of all time? Absolutely. On my list, I'd have Jordan, number one, Kobe, number two, Jerry West, number three, Clyde Drexler, number four, and D. Wade, number five. Certain people might say, why would you have Clyde over Dwayne Wade? Those of you brothers out there who saw Clyde Drexler play, you understand what I'm getting at. It's close. It's very close. Very close. But um, I would have, I would have Clyde Drexler over D. Wade. And that just goes to show you how, in my view, the shooting guard position from numbers 2 to 5 is so close. To me, it's, it's really infinitesimal how close it is from 2 to 5. Because I think that Clyde Drexler may be the most underrated NBA player of all time. Him along with D-Wade. But that's a whole other debate for another day. Because no one mentions his name. And he led Portland to two finals appearances in Portland. Unfortunately for, for the Portland Trailblazers, they faced two of the best teams of all time. In the Bad Boy Pistons and the Michael Jordan Bulls. Then Clyde goes to Houston in 95. And he rejuvenates and reinvigorates that team. And assists them in winning the only title that he would win in his career so i mean that's that's a good debate clyde drexler or d wade but let's get to the conversation let's see what they have to say here's Dwayne on his tribute 
point of away from the game of basketball, as I continue to say, and just, you know, understanding how important, um, you know, we are um, as professionals. Um, and, you know, for me, it's just giving whatever I can, um, you know, to people who believe in me, um, and especially people who's happy about, you know, me coming back here, who embrace me the way that um, I only can dream of uh, with me coming back home. Um, so, you know, just paying uh, some, some due respect to him and his family um, tonight. So uh, appreciate you noticing that. Love that Dwayne did that. Students at Stoneman Douglas returned to school for the first time since the shooting today. We are thinking of all of them. Before the game, Wade was asked about his future with the Heat, telling the Miami Herald he's undecided on if he'll retire after this season. Matt I don't think he's going to retire. I think he's going to play at least one more season. I think that Dwayne has been rejuvenated by going back to the Heat. I think that that's one of the great favors that LeBron did for him. It was almost like a good friend telling you, you know you need to make up with that girl. You know that's the girl for you. Stop fucking around. Stop playing games. You need to get back with that woman. She loves you and you love her. D-Way should never have left Miami in the first place. Him going to Chicago and to Cleveland, all that nonsense. He's supposed to be a Heat for life. He should never have spent one game outside of that uniform. There are certain players that should never have left their franchise. He's certainly one of them. But he allowed his pride to get the better of him. Max, you're up. If Wade yeah. calls it quits, how will we remember him? As I've already stated, D. Wade, one of the top five shooting guards of all time. A great, great clutch performer early in his career. One of the best penetrators in NBA history. Outside of Jordan and Allen Iverson, I cannot think of a, of a great player who was a better penetrator than Dwayne Wade. A great player. Now, you had other players in NBA history who could penetrate, but they were not great players. But of the great players that I can think of offhand, as far as penetrators, it's Jordan, Iverson, D. Wade, as the three that stand out to me in the last 25 plus years, who can get to the basket whenever they want it, on whoever they wanted and could finish at the cup over far bigger men. Those three men stood out. Kobe was a very good penetrator, but he had very small hands, so sometimes he had issues at the cup. I know, once again, the Kobe fans going to try to spaz on me. I don't give a shit. Kobe's an all-time great. He's above D-Wade, but as a penetrator, no, he's not D-Wade. problem with D-Wade was he took too many unnecessary falls early in his career, and it started to show after his 7th and 8th season. That's why he was so open to LeBron coming to, to assist him. You know, while, of course, he was also ass assisting LeBron. Because LeBron had no real leadership skills whatsoever. And he had to learn them from D-Wade. Unfortunately, I believe he will be underrated by history. Let's not forget, Dwayne Wade, for years, was top three player in the game. Yes. In the mid-2000s, he was top three. No, no lower than top five. But in the mid-2000s, you, you had Tim Duncan, you had Kobe, you had him, Steve Nash. You know, those were the best players of the 2000s. Nowitzki. You know, along with Kobe and Tim Duncan, um, Dwayne Wade had the bet between Michael Jordan in his prime and LeBron when he had his great finals. The gr oh, of course, and LeBron as well. The greatest final that was had by any player was Dwayne Wade against the Mavericks with Shaquille O'Neal. But Dwayne Wade was the star of the show. Wade was a, an all-time great, the third greatest shooting guard of the modern era, but Stephen A., I believe he will be underrated by history for several reasons. Number one, he coexisted with Kobe Bryant, who was a little bit bigger, a little bit better, for a little bit longer. So he doesn't get the top spot of his era. Two, um, he co-starred with LeBron James as clearly the second best player on that team and when there was a little bit of a confusion about who would take the lead in fact they didn't win it wasn't until it was very clear LeBron is the guy that right but that goes into my statements pertaining to LeBron that he does not know what to do when he doesn't have the basketball because they should have beat the Mavericks in 2011 if LeBron didn't spit the bit and have a total mental breakdown even with them playing your turn my turn they were so much better than the than the Dallas Mavericks there's no way that they should have lost that series for them to lose that series, the only way that they could have lost was for LeBron to do what he did, which is to not just have a subpar series. He had a horrific series. The man had a game where he scored eight points in a game. I mean, if there should have been a, an investigation 
on someone throwing a series, they should have investigated LeBron for that shit. Because that was abysmal. Abysmal. And that's why I laugh when, you know, these people talk about LeBron and Michael Jordan. Give me a break. LeBron right now is chasing Larry Bird. That's who he has in his sights. I don't care how many points LeBron scores. I don't care how many PEDs you know, he has injected into him allegedly. No. The Michael Jordan ship has sailed for LeBron James. Point being is this. They should have won the 2011 finals even with him and D-Way playing your turn, my turn. But he had a total mental breakdown when he didn't have the basketball in a pressurized situation. He didn't want to run back cuts. He didn't want to really set picks. When he did get the ball, he didn't know what to do. And he failed his friend, Dwayne Wade. To the point where Dwayne Wade had to pull him aside after the season and say, you know what? You take the lead. I'll be supplementary. I'll be there to help you and assist you mentally. That, if nothing else, shows you the importance of being mentally mature like a Dwayne Wade. That they won the championships. Three. He came along right before analytics really changed the game. So I'm afraid that history will look at his numbers and say he wasn't as efficient as he should have been, etc. Uh, no. Only the stat nerds like you will, will do some dumb shit like that, Max. Only the stat nerds will do some dumb shit like that. Uh, anybody who saw Dwayne Wade play knows how great he was before, he, before the injury started to pile up. I mean, he. I remember some of his performances in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Pistons, who were a great defensive team in the early 2000s. And, I mean, he, he cut them up like Swiss cheese. He had one of the great mid-range jumpers of that era. He pretty much came at the end of the mid-range jumper era. Him and Carmelo, they pretty much ended that era. You know, now we're in the take a three or go for a layup era. But back in the 2000s, it was D. Wade, Carmelo, and Kobe who were the masters of the Michael Jordan mid-range jumper. Four. We're now in an era of six foot ten guys, basically, who play the same position he does, give or take. Paul George, Kevin Durant. I mean, you could talk, talk about a two or a three, but you know what it is. What the hell is Max talking about? Give me a break. Paul George, there's nobody who's going to confuse Paul George with being as good as Dwayne Wade. And Kevin Durant is a three. Everybody knows that. Max is trying too hard to act as if Dwayne Wade is going to be forgotten in history. No, sir. If you want to make any statement about Dwayne Wade, it would be the correlation that I made at the beginning of this video of him being the Clyde Drexler of his era. Um, the Greek freak, you know, positionless basketball, where all you know is this is a two-way win, except instead of six foot four, they're six foot ten. Not to mention, I mentioned like the analytics, guys like James Harden who play the same position, who put up absurd numbers in this day and age. So for a variety of reasons, I'm afraid that Dwayne Wade, Stephen A. will wind up like a Connie Hawkins figure. You know, Connie Hawkins is a guy who people who saw him will swear by him to this day. But he's largely forgotten when people talk about the greatest players who ever played the game. His name doesn't come up enough, and I'm afraid that the same fate awaits Dwayne Wade. Well, the problem with that analogy is that Connie Hawkins never led a team to an NBA title. He played on the Lakers in the early 70s with, with uh, Jerry West and Wilt Chamberlain, but he wasn't the leader of that team. Dwayne Wade has already led a team to an NBA championship, so no, sir. The fate that, made the way, that may await Dwayne Wade that you're alluding to is because of people like you. I thank you, sir. Thank, <laughs> thank you, sir. What the hell is Max Kellerman talking about? All this nonsense about advanced analytics. You think they're going to give a shit about that when he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame on the first ballot? Give me a break. I blame people like you and others that are, are more focused on numbers than actually watching the damn games. Thank you, sir. Y'all will sit up there and watch the game and then y'all will rely upon numbers and numbers tell you the whole story instead of having an eye for flat out ballers. Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade was never Michael Jordan. Dwayne Wade ain't Kobe Bryant. But Dwayne Wade being anywhere... He's closer to Kobe than you think, brother. Anywhere from a top three to top five off guard all time is not an insult. Thank you, sir. That's where I would have him. Anywhere from top three to top five. I can't put him at three or four, though, because I don't think that he's had the career that Adre West had. Um, and out of respect to Clyde Drexler, I will put Clyde over him. But that's definitely a debate.
If you were to put Dwayne Wade over Clyde, I, that's def, that's certainly understandable. If Harden wins a championship this year or next year, um, the debate would be Harden, Clyde, or Dwayne Wade in regards to who would be anywhere from four through four or five. Who's fighting? What two guys are going to knock out the third guy for four and five? Because Harden's right there. He's knocking on the, on the door, but he has to have you know, he has to have a signature playoff moment that leads to a championship. He, he, he doesn't have that yet, so he can't go into that top five class because everybody in the top five has a, has a title, at least one. He's going into the Hall of Fame. He's got three rings. He's an NBA Finals MVP, and he's universally recognized as one of the greatest off-guards in the history of basketball. And so because of that, the fact that you're a member of the conversation automatically should surmise that you're not going to be underrated or underappreciated because he was never considered the greatest. It was always going to be a player or two or three that were considered better than him at the off-guard spot. But you still were going to remain, uh, recognize him as being elite. That room that they talk about where you can have a plethora of Hall of Famers, but there's certain rooms that the elite Hall of Famers are. Michael Jordan might be in a different room than a Patrick Ewing or a Reggie yeah. Miller who was great but never won a title. But Dwayne Wade is going to be in that elite room. Dwayne Wade is going to be in that same room with MJ. That uh, I don't know about that, sir. No, Stephen. I think you went a little too damn far. If, you, if we want to talk about rooms... Well, you know, I mean, if you want to say Dwayne Wade is in the room, but he's not sitting at the same table, if you want to specify that way, but I'm not even sure if he's in the room. And when we talk about that room, it got to be a big room for Dwayne Wade to be in there with Michael Jordan. Um, you have Michael, you have Bill Russell, you have Kareem, Magic, Bird. That's the room to me. That's the room where you have those guys together. Uh, when you're talking about D. Wade... Now, you know, you're more going into the the uh, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, you know, that room right there, that that area, David Robinson. He's in, you know, he's kind of in that that realm. John Stockton, Carl Malone, even though they never won a title, they accomplished so much as players that I think that, that they would be in the same room with a Dwayne Wade. I'd put Patrick Ewing maybe just a smidgen below the Carl Malone, John Stockton level. But D. Wade in the same room with Michael? No. I, I don't even know if D. Wade's in the same room with, with LeBron right now. Like, D. Wade is not even in one, one room away from Michael. He's two rooms away. LeBron is one room away. That same room with Magic. That same room with LeBron. That same room with the Oscar Robinsons of the world and people like that. Dwayne Wade is going to be in that room. So if we take well, anything away, hold on, hold on. If we take anything away from him, it's going to be because we got cats that are looking at numbers. They're not taking into account the way the game has changed and softened considerably in this era and how it's more conducive because dudes up in the league office wanted to soften the game and make it more entertaining for the viewer at large and how elite guys ultimately end up benefiting from it because they came in a later era. We're not gonna, those numbers guys are not going to look at it. But there will always be people like me around who will say, damn that, you should look at this. Watch the damn game. Watch these guys ball, particularly in moments where it counts. Max, there's a couple, there's a few dudes that if you really, really look at it, that will remain nameless. Oh, they're very, very good. They're very, very good at catching you off a of back-to-back. They're very good at catching you on an off night or when you go into a city. Like when you go into a city like the ATL or Toronto or New York City or L.A. and then you have to play against them. Oh, they're very, very good at giving you numbers then. But when it really, really counts, you got an APB out for them. You can't find them in a damn place. Well, name names, Stephen, eh? Stop leading me all the way to the treasure and you're not going to tell me where it's buried. Tell me who you're talking about, Negro. Those are the difference. That's the difference. Numbers don't tell that story. Wade is a thoroughbred. Wade is a champion. 100%. And you can't accuse me of only looking at numbers when I'm the one sitting here bringing up the fact that he will be underrated because the numbers will not reflect how great he really was because I can he got accuse caught you in the transitional period. 
I can way, accuse you of it because I expect you to be one of those people that was listen. No, if you way, can, listen, if you watch the way Bryant wait, too. Now I'm going. I'm going to what you're saying, Max. I'm, Come on, Max Kellerman. Kobe Bryant's not going to be underrated down the line. He played with the LA Lakers. His fans are probably the most, <laughs> the most overly enthusiastic about his career of any fan base in the NBA. Of any fan base, his fan base is the most ridiculous and the most emotional. Believe me, the last person that you have to worry about how they're going to be remembered is Kobe Bryant. The one thing that I will say about D. Wade in regards to a comparison with Clyde Drexler is that I might have to give D. Wade a half notch down underneath Clyde or make him a half notch down underneath Clyde because of the steroid allegations or the PED use allegations, I should say. Let me, let me correct myself. Allegedly. Allegedly. All these players in the 2000s, you, ha you have to look at with a critical eye in regards to those allegations, those associations and affiliations. Allegedly. But that's neither here nor there. D. Wade is a great player regardless. I'm, I'm coming right at you. I'm accusing you of doing this, Max. I'm not accusing you of what? ignoring his greatness. I'm not accusing you of ignoring his greatness. I know you know. What I'm saying to you is, who the hell is the, will be the first person to remind us of those damn analytics dudes? Who's going to be the first person that brings that up? It's going Maybe to me. be Max Kellerman. Maybe you're going to bring up MIT. You're going to bring up Sessions in, in, in Boston in the summertime. You're going to bring up all of that second stuff. Second spectrum. Okay, this is what, yeah, what you do. Second right. spectrum, all of that stuff. That's you right. know, the 530, all of that but but those that's are gonna but those be are, you. But those are only tools. They're not definitive. We're never going to have perfect knowledge of sports, nor should we want perfect knowledge of sports. If Agreed. Sports, if we had it and could make right. perfect predictions and I, assessments, what's the point in let, watching let, it? Let, let, but, well, you should tie it to the Gematria guys. According to them, everything is by the numbers, and they know the score of every game. Allegedly. Yet none of them dudes will bet on the game, but they, they supposedly know how, how every game is going to end and what score. Ain't that a bitch. They won't bet, though. But it's a tool that you can use. Let me simplify my, and clarify my position when it comes to you. There's a beautiful desk in front of me. My iPad is on it right now, okay? I'm yes. looking at the desk, and I'm saying, damn, this desk looks pretty damn good. Max is thinking about the wrench, you know, the screwdriver, and all the little tools that put it together. That that's Max Kellerman. The desk? You know, that's, Max, Max. that's Max Kellerman. I'm saying that's what you're going to do. I'm not saying you, don't, you know what it takes, but in the same breath, you're going to focus on the tools around the desk, and I'm going to focus on the fact that this damn finished product is nice. Damn, you know, you know what I need to see? I need to see an argument between Stephen A and a really cantankerous black chick. I need to... <laughs> and get some popcorn <laughs> just to see who's going to win that shit. I need to see an argument between those two parties, man. Oh, my goodness. That's just going to be like Ali Frazier 4. Can I, can, I, can I just mention this? Sure. If Dwayne Wade is in the same room with Michael Jordan at that party... Uh, I don't remember the remember remember coming to America when they thought they were getting invited to the to the to the house, but really they yes. wanted them to serve drinks and stuff. That's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Max Kellerman. I have no idea what Stephen A. Smith is smoking or snorting, but th there's no planet where Dwayne Wade is in the same room as Michael Jordan. Sorry, brother. That's right. Yeah. I don't know if Dwayne Wade is in the Michael Jordan room. If he is, he he may be there serving drinks. No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What I'm I don't saying know if he's is, in the Jordan room. Well, well I'm, not, I'm not trying to put him on Jordan's level. I'm saying Jordan's not going to be in a room by himself. There are levels. Right. And, 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 and D. Wade is on an elite level. There are Hall of Famers who never experienced and, and put forth what D. Wade experienced and put forth. You can make the, you can make the case that possibly D. Wade could be on that same floor. Like maybe he could be on that floor. But in that room, no, sir. No. That's it's just that yeah, simple. I just I'm, I mean let's be for real. D Wade had a season in Miami where they had the worst record in the NBA. Like you, you, you can't do that. That's another check against him being on Clyde Drexler's level. And my point is my point is I agree with you, the room that Wade belongs Or I shouldn't say on Clyde Drexler's level as being better than Clyde. Because I think that that's a serious debate. Clyde Drexler or D. Wade. I will, I will give Clyde a slight, slight edge over, over D. Wade the more I think about it. Belongs in, maybe not the Jordan room, but the next one. 
and I'm afraid that history is going to put him in the one after well, who, that. Who and he belongs in the room with Jordan? It. Who belongs in the, jo in the room with Jordan? Bill Russell? Well, yeah, Bill Russell, Kareem okay. Abdul Jabbar, okay. you know, a couple others. All right, maybe. I mean, if, that, if that's a separate room, that's fine. All I'm telling you is, is that D Wade is going to be closer to that room than is, some of those other Is he in the Larry fans. Bird, Magic Johnson room? Hell yeah. Is he in the. No, no, you said that too quick. No, sorry. D Wade is not in the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird room. Once again, D Wade had a year in Miami where they where they had the worst record in the NBA. I'm sorry, but I can't co-sign that one. Larry Bird's rookie year, he took a team that won 29 games and made them a 60 win team in one season. And this was this was the year before Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish and those guys got there. So no, sir, I'm sorry. And of course, Magic Johnson's first year, they won the title. Hell yes! Mm. Hell yes! No, I think he's in the room right after that. Thank you, sir. Same thing I said. Same thing I said. You got the Jordan, Bill Russell, um, Jordan, Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But you know what? I would have D-Wade in the third room, but I wouldn't have Bird and Magic Johnson in a separate room from, from Jordan, Abdul-Jabbar, and Russell. I would have those five in the first room. In the second room, I would have LeBron and Tim Duncan and Shaq, Wilt, Hakeem. And then the third room... But well, damn. Now that I think of it, depends on how big your how big your rooms are. Because shit, D Wade might be in the fourth or the fifth room. Because I don't, I'm not sure if I could put him in the room with Isaiah Thomas and Moses Malone and Kobe and Dr. J and and those guys, John Havlicek and Oscar Robertson and those guys in that room. I don't know. I don't want him in the room after that one. A lot of rooms. Max, you built the desk ground up. I'm proud of you. Three top champ. Wade had. He has uh, 12 All-Star Games, three chips, but I want to read a tweet by him, guys, that I found really powerful before we go to break here. This is Joaquin Oliver. He was one of the 17 young lives that were lost tragically at Douglas High School in Parkland. Joaquin was one of many that I heard was excited about my return to Miami and yesterday was buried in my jersey. This is why we will not just shut up and dribble. I don't understand what that has to do with not shutting up and dribbling. You didn't save that young man's life. If what he means by that is that we can inspire people, you inspire them by what you're doing on the court. You're not inspiring them by what you're saying off the court. Once again, and I'm sure that there are going to be many pro blackity blacks that are not going to understand my sentiment. My whole thing is this. Everyone has the right to speak and give their perspective. But it's very, very important that you're informed when you speak on political issues, societal issues. It does not mean anything to just quote unquote speak out. Muhammad Ali did not just speak out. He actually was a was a part of an ideology. He wasn't just talking. It, it wasn't just about getting attention for himself. And a lot of these basketball players and, and football players, quote unquote woke athletes, they're very confused in regards to what their what their intentions should be. Or maybe they're not confused. Maybe they already know what their intentions are and they just want to be seen and, and um cause as much chaos as possible either way they're not making Laura Ingram look ignorant by saying that we're going to keep talking if you don't know what you're talking about you only make her look wrong if you speak and you're and you're informed and you're informing others that's really the point much more coming up on first take it turns but anyway that's it on that after it's all said and done, Dwayne Wade will be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a three-time champion. He led his team to one of those chips, and he's had a great career. Peace.